Today's human race is more qualified in heading in the goal of peace and development together than any other time before. China advocates that people of all countries unite in a concerted effort. The global order and global governance system, which one is good to the world and the global people, is up to the negotiation of all people worldwide instead of being decided by one side or a minority of people. China will actively participate in the construction of a global governance system, trying to contribute China's wisdom to implementing global governance and will push global order and governance system to develop in a fairer and more reasonable way, together with people from all other countries. Parents at one Florida school say they were shocked when their kids brought home a Pledge of Allegiance opt-out waiver. But this was the first year that this school put a specific waiver in its student handbook. They have now removed it. I didn't know you could opt out of the Pledge it's of Allegiance. new to me. New to me. I've never heard of that. All right. But then there's recently Florida governor and legislature have said that there's a current on the books as we sit here and have this conversation law that requires written notice about the opt out portion. And I agree with you, Kathy. That's a sad day. We need to be teaching patriotism and civic responsibility as, as the preferred way to do and things. And I think this is just an, a great example of progressive politics continuing to destroy our education system. Our top story tonight, teachers at Carlos Ray Elementary School are in a tough situation. They were told by their assistant principal to stop calling their students boys and girls. And this is the first example we are seeing of something that started as a bathroom issue, now expanding into daily life in the classroom. It's titled Gender Identity Procedural Directive. It basically says starting this month, teachers can no longer refer to their students as boys and girls, telling them to eliminate gender in their classrooms. Police are under fire after failing to tell the public about a surveillance plane flying over Baltimore and recording the activity of thousands of citizens. It's the first surveillance of this scope nationwide. It's believed to be the largest such use of this extensive monitoring in American history. A plane with high-tech cameras to investigate crimes. If you see low-flying helicopters buzzing around Boston today, it's all part of a government training exercise. This video posted to Twitter where a lot of people were wondering what was going on. Some fast moving helicopters flying in and around Boston. This has been happening all week long. Some people told us the choppers are flying close enough that their homes are shaking and police are only telling us this is a training exercise. Look closely and listen. You'll see and hear what some people saw last night above downtown Boston. We found this video posted to YouTube. Helicopters one after another flying low above the high rises and close enough for people to notice. And not just last night, but all week. On Twitter, Fox 25 found numerous tweets from locals wondering what those helicopters were there for. The DOD says this was planned and is not, quote, in response to any world events. When I asked Boston police today for more information, they would only say the specifics are kept mysterious for good reason. When we asked about the helicopters, Fox 25 was directed to the Department of Defense, who wouldn't comment on the exercise. Tears is an unprecedented security operation. They have become the new norm. Security forces are now part of the scenery in Rio de Janeiro. Many of Germany's new anti-terror proposals sound familiar, resembling those introduced in France and the United Kingdom. They include boosting video surveillance in public spaces and increasing the presence of police on trains, railway stations and airports. They also call for more security personnel on the streets, with a plan to recruit 15,000 police officers by 2020. Hugo Tisaka manages a private firm that was hired to help with security during the World Cup. 
He says the rules of the game have changed significantly in the past two years, with the focus now being the threat from terrorism. Because this is quite a new threat for us. Well, your mobile phone and all the data that is on it can reveal a whole lot about you. That's for sure. And now the people who run Bryant Park have teamed up with a tech firm to mine all that information from anyone who visits. When we download a free mobile app, we often consent to that app recording our location, when and where we use it. Place IQ collects all that data from all those apps from every phone that enters Bryant Park. It's going to happen eventually, so no surprise. None we encountered Thursday knew of this data mining technology, and while a few felt uncomfortable with the park's use of it, like violated. Cyborgs, you probably think of Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. as the Terminator. Robocop's another famous mechanical human. Well, it may surprise you to learn that cyborgs are no longer limited to being just in sci fi movies. A woman in Australia is now a combo of Darth Vader and the Terminator, thanks to some special implants. Here's an x ray of her hands. Uh, those circles are microchips. We're talking about biometric information. For those of you who don't know, biometrics are personal identifiers that are uniquely yours. Some might say it's a social security number that God gave you, not the government. I'll be back. The Terminator, possibly the most famous cyborg of all. Fast forward to 2016. And Arnie isn't the only superhuman getting around. Meet Emil Grafstra, a real-life cyborg who's literally placed technology in the palm of his hand. This, is this the way of the future? Is this how people are going to be uh, logging onto computers, making phone calls even, you know, with the wave of a hand? I think any kind of access where it's, uh, you know, an identity issue, either a payment or, um, you know, key replacement, password replacement, uh, I think it's a, a, a real nice convenience. And in the future, I think it will help bridge the digital and biological identities of a person. The financial industry is also turning to iris recognition. Woody Bank introduced iris verification ATMs. Users can register their iris data and link them to their bank accounts. 한마디로 개인 인증이 필요한 모든 곳에서 적용이 가능하다고 판단됩니다. 우선 IoT와 모바일 웨어러블 디바이스 기반의 생체 인증 기술이 융합된 제품과 서비스에 확대될 것으로 전망합니다. 또한 스마트폰과 연동된 각종 홈 관련 기기 인증에도 우선 적용될 것이며 관련 기술들이 예상보다 빠르게 생활 속에 자리 잡게 될 것입니다. Yesterday we showed you millions of fish had suddenly died near the Raritan Bay. This week leaving a foul smelling mess. Behind me is one of the affected areas. Take a look. This marina is being taken over by dead fish and the smell out here is becoming unbearable for some residents. It looked like ice when we first pulled up. We didn't know what it was. From far away, it's unclear exactly what is covering the surface of the water and surrounding Art Lynch's boat here at Lentz Marina in Keensburg, New Jersey. But up close, you can see and smell the hundreds of thousands of dead fish that have washed up here. Over the past few days, these dead peanut bunker fish have also turned up in Waycake Creek and along Keensburg Beach. The evidence is right here tonight. You can see fish and even stingrays washed up along the shoreline. Uh, it just seems like everything is kind of just dying off. Fishermen like Dana Pate are seeing signs of another fish kill in the Indian River. We saw for ourselves not just dead fish, but stingrays in the brown murky water. Yeah, you know, it was really nice. The water here was clear. You could see, you know, long distance. But since last March, after one of the largest fish kills the lagoon has seen, residents have been watching closely. Florida Fish and Wildlife issued a statement on this recent fish kill after our inquiry. Officials say this event is not associated with the blue-green algae located in the southern part of the lagoon earlier this summer. But in a different statement, FWC says it's been testing waters weekly at eight different sites. These recent kills could be caused by something else. The quake flattened much of Amatrice, a town 100 100 miles northeast of Rome. Residents recall the intense shaking. Clinking, thundering, sort of rumble. It felt like someone had put a bulldozer out of the house to trying to knock it down. And strong aftershocks are only complicating efforts. This morning, this building, part of a school, was badly damaged, but still standing. And then this afternoon, one of the aftershocks brought it down. The picturesque town of Amatrice has been turned into a flattened moonscape. Drone footage showing a stark divide. The town's ancient buildings now in ruins, while its more modern buildings still stand. 
Following Italy's devastating quake, Myanmar is also hit by a powerful tremor. At least 185 ancient Buddhist pagodas in the city collapsed in the 6.8 magnitude quake. The quake was so powerful that it was also felt in Thailand, Bangladesh and India. And in this current environment, um, that is not beyond the, the realms of possibility. <laughs> 